Hi, and welcome to Mermaid Chart. My name is Dominic, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a flowchart in our editor in Mermaid Chart. There are going to be several different ways to do this, and I will show you all of them, uh, whether you are technical or non technical. So, we are starting on our projects page, and I want to do it in my personal project. So, I'm going to go ahead and click into this. Uh, I have created a special subfolder uh, for Mermaid Chart tutorials in my personal folder. So, let's go there. And then we're going to go ahead and click create new. What you'll see here is you can do many of the options that we're going to cover today, uh, which are building a flowchart in the whiteboard, building a flowchart with the AI chat, building a flowchart with the code editor and the visual editor under diagram. And um, I will show you how these kind of all connect to each other, how you can use them as standalone uh, ways to edit and complete your diagram. So why don't we just jump right in and we are going to start with the AI chat. If you want a very specific way to edit the diagram, there will be timestamps down in the description and I'll try to do some pop-ups as we go as well. But we are going to start with the AI chat. We're going to move over to the code editor, do some editing. Uh, then we'll do some more editing using our visual editor. And then I'll show you the whiteboard. So when we are in Mermaid AI, you have some sample prompts here. We are specifically uh, caring about flowcharts today. So you have flowchart for making a pizza. But what I can also do is write a custom prompt. So I'm going to say, give me a flowchart showing a simple sign in process for a website. We're just going to go super simple. The AI chat is going to write it right in front of us. And we will get our diagram shortly. So we can see we have a user on the sign in page. They enter their credentials. Are the credentials valid? Yes, they sign in and go to the dashboard. If they're not valid, we're going to show that error message and retry. They're going to enter their credentials again, go through the same flow. So this is a pretty good basic diagram. So we're actually going to take it and we can choose to go straight to the editor if we'd like. We can go straight to the whiteboard. Um, but if we go ahead and click edit here, that will take us over to our code editor. So now if you are non-technical uh, or you don't want to write diagrams using text, do not worry. We can do everything with our mouse if we'd like. Uh, right now, I am going to show how we edit it with the AI. Then I'll show how we edit it using the code. And then I will go into using the mouse. So again, find the timestamp that corresponds to what you care about and go ahead and skip to that part of the video. So we used Mermaid AI as our first uh, pass for our sign-in. What I notice here when I open the Mermaid AI in the editor is we still have that diagram that came over. And I can use Mermaid AI to expand on ideas in my flowchart. I can ask it to make very specific edits. Uh, I can ask it for syntax help as well. So uh, what I want to do here is, uh, are credentials valid? That is a good decision node. I want to highlight it a little bit more. So I'm going to edit using Mermaid AI. I'm going to ask it to change the color for me. So I'm going to say, can you change the R credentials valid node to be blue with a black border? So this is a very specific styling change I'm asking it to do. But what I could also do is I can ask it to give me more details on entering credentials, uh, what that requires, and things like that. But now you see I have that very specific change. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the diagram and you'll see Mermaid AI uh, actually added the syntax, which creates the diagram on the right for me. All right. So now that our diagram is made, we made a change with the Mermaid AI. Let's take a step back and let's look at how the text on the left here corresponds to that diagram that you see on the right. So flowcharts are made up of two very simple things nodes and edges between nodes. So what we actually see here is a node for the user on sign in page on the diagram. What we have here is another node for enter credentials. So right here is the node ID. We are calling this node A. That way we can do very specific things in the syntax uh, just by writing A rather than writing out this whole label. So this is the ID of our node, and this is the name of the node that's going to show on our diagram. Here we have a edge or an arrow from our node A to our node B, which is enter credentials. So again, B is our ID, 
and enter credentials is the label of our node B. Now you can see how uh, right here, a label, or sorry, an ID can be used very easily uh, to connect one node to another. So we call this node show error message and retry. The ID is E. So we are able to collect, uh, connect E to B just by writing this one node to another node. If we wanted to create another connection or a new node, let's write something like Z. I want to create maybe a decision node. So I am going to do um, curly brackets and let's just do sample. So you can see the whatever I surround the label with is going to create the type of shape. There's a really easy way to get the shape that you want and learn that syntax. And all you got to do is open our code snippets. Like for example, if I want a database node, all I got to do is drop it in there and then change the label out. So you can see the database has a uh, bracket with a parentheses and a parentheses and a bracket. So let's go ahead and uh, actually we'll keep the database node. And I just want to rename this ID as F. So now we have a node Z and a node F hanging out on our diagram, but with different labels on them. So now if we want to connect Z to F, all we do is write Z with an arrow to F. If we want to put some notes on the edge in between here, we can definitely do that. All we have to do is expand our arrow and right in the middle, we just write some notes. So now you can see we have node Z connecting to zode at, uh, node F, and we have some notes in the middle. So that is how the syntax on the left corresponds with the diagram on the right. So now we have this diagram. We've added a few things. What I'm going to show you now is the visual editor. So the visual editor can be used to create uh, flowcharts from scratch, but it's also really great for making just minor tweaks to your diagram. So at any time when you're using a flowchart or a sequence diagram, you can click on the nodes and you have options to change the background color. So since this is our start node, we are going to go ahead and make it green. I can change the border color. So I'm going to make that dark green. I can change the border, how it looks. I can change the shape. So since it is a start node, I'm actually going to turn it into a circle. And we can do all of that right here. So text color, if I want to make it red, I can do all of that by clicking on the diagram. But on the left, everything still corresponds to each other. So you can see now my shape in the syntax has been changed to the circle shape, which is just two parentheses on each side. You can see also that I've got styling done for this specific node, and I did it all through clicking. So I could come in here and I could write the syntax to style this node in a certain way, or I could just click on it. So if I want to create a node from scratch, I've got a few different ways to do that with the visual editor. I can click to add a node on a bar here and choose my shape. So we'll do like a horizontal cylinder. I can add subgraphs as well. So I can right click on other nodes, move things to subgraphs. And if I want to change the labels, all I got to do is just double click on it. And same with the nodes. So here is a horizontal cylinder. And there we go. If I want to connect one node to another, all I do is drag from one to the other. If I want to create a new node from an existing node, I just have to drag off an empty space. I can add icons in here using the visual editor. So if I want to do, you know, some uh, bells for notifications and connect those, I can absolutely do that. We also have Azure and AWS icons in here if you're interested in software architecture. Um, but you can see how this all plays together. So everything, again, that I've done on the right using our visual editor is still tying to the syntax on the left side. So everything we do on each side is always going to sync up with each other. So to do a very simple um, example of this, let's just delete everything and let's go back, uh, back to a flowchart. I'm going to create a node. And I'm going to drag off an empty space and visual editor is going to come in here and I can just click on things. I'm going to change those shapes and I'm going to have my nodes and I'm going to make this my end node. So now you can see how this visual editor can be really fast. And again, everything I'm doing on the right is happening on the left. So 
That is how we use a diagram using the visual editor. One thing I want to note before we move over to the whiteboard is we have this timeline here. So if I don't like that, I just scratched my whole diagram. I can actually come back and restore. So if I want to go back to that one that I just had, that was a lot more simple. I can definitely do that. And now I'm just going to delete my database node and my sample node to get back to where we were. Before we move to the whiteboard and I show you how to create nodes and flowcharts with that, we're going to go back to the mermaid AI one more time, and I'm going to show you how you can converse with it. You can chat back and forth and you can expand on your diagram. Uh, not just with styling that I already showed you. So for example, if I want to learn how we can check whether credentials are valid, I can ask, can you expand on how we check whether credentials are valid by adding nodes to my flowchart? All we're doing is pointing to a specific thing in our diagram and we're asking it to make some changes. So now that it has done that, we're going to go ahead and use this diagram and we'll just collapse Mermaid AI for now and take a look. So user is on the sign-in page, they enter their credentials, send the credentials for validation. The backend processes credentials, do they match? Yes, then they sign in. If they don't match, no, we're going to show an error message and retry and it goes back up to our loop. If we want to expand again with our visual editor, all we do is a simple switch here and I'm going to make just an end node and I'm going to go ahead and change this to be red to be very clear that uh, this is the end of my diagram, the end of this process. And so now we have our diagram. I've shown you how to make it with AI. I've shown you how to edit it with AI. I've shown you how the syntax and the diagram connect to each other and I've shown you how to use the visual editor. Now the last thing which I'm sure a lot of you uh, non-technical folks are going to be excited about is our whiteboard. So this is only available for flowcharts at the moment, but if you come to the whiteboard, your diagram that was just rigid and you couldn't move anything, uh, now has the ability to be moved, has the ability to be resized. And just like you saw with the visual editor, you have all the same options. So we can change it to a circle. I can change the size of it. I can change the colors. I can do everything that I would like to do to the diagram. But now I have that extra customizability of putting nodes where I want them to be. So uh, if user is on the sign in page, I can move this super close to my enter credentials. I can rearrange everything. And now I can position things where I want. So if I want a little more space, the user is on the sign in page. They're going to enter their credentials. If I want to move this over to the left here so that we have kind of like a, a left side of my diagram and now a right side of my diagram, I can do that as well. So you can see I can just rearrange everything as I would like it to be. And here is a little bit of a simpler flow. So now you can see, you know, I can line up things exactly how I want them rather than still being stuck to that rigid structure. So now I've got something that I think looks a little bit better for me. But if I don't like it and I kind of liked where it was, I can always click this rearrange and just go back to uh, the previous kind of setup. So that was uh, the hierarchical view. We do have adaptive, which is a little bit uh, with straighter lines, so a little more professional. So this is how the whiteboard works. Of course, you can come in here. You can add shapes as you'd like. Use it just like the visual editor. Connect one node to another. Again, if you want to create a node easily, you can always just drag off into empty space. And then we have some options for you to make it look a little better. You can always come into the design, use the themes, make it into a forest if you'd like. Uh, you can do all of this stuff. Uh, you can also make it hand-drawn if you'd like. So it's definitely worth exploring. We have text, so you can just write notes places if you would like, uh, change those themes, add icons, and add images. So this is a really great way to, um, again, customize what your layout is but also add new nodes, just use your mouse to use everything. And then of course it is mermaid. So everything that we just did is still going to correspond to the syntax on the left. So now if we had any use for this or want to send it to someone else who's familiar with mermaid, all we have to do, we can copy it, we can share it with them, uh, or we can export. So that is how you make a flow chart and mermaid chart. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment them down below or reach out to us via email anytime. Uh, I'd be super happy to help you.
Uh, thank you so much for your time and I hope you have a good day. Happy diagramming.